Hey, I'm just going to show you what's setting up Open Arrow 2 on uh, this new FX61 is all about. Now, um, as you can hear, a lot of rattling going on. Now, the reason for that is that uh, it defaults to a PWM receiver, so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, quickly just change that to um, CPPM, which is what I'm using here today. And straight away you can see that you know we have control. However, it defaulted to an aeroplane, so um, before we get too carried away, I'm going to set it up properly. I'll just show you what, quickly what we have to do. First of all, we select flying wing. Um, the board is mounted backwards as you can see. Normally that way is forward, but as you can see, mm, we're pointing backwards. So um, we'll just quickly change that to uh, aft. Not much else to do here. I'll switch the loss model alarm off, otherwise it'll start start beeping at us all the time. Um, and that's it there. Right. Now, one important thing about Open Arrow 2 is that it's a bit fussy about um, the polarity of uh, the input signals. So, if we go to this page, we can see. See, if I move the throttle up, you can see the throttle there going up. Here it's negative. Now, it's very important that when you hold the sticks like this, away and to the right, all the signals are positive. Now, you can see the positive. If I go the other way, you see they're negative. You have to make sure they're positive. If not, you change the reversing on your transmitter, or you can do it in inside Open Arrow 2, but it's just very important. Now, while I'm on this screen, I'm going to make sure that all of my controls we go into this thing, you can see that the throttle is not quite pretty much close to centered there. Notice the throttle is in the middle position. If we go back here and press curl, you notice they all drop to zero. Everything's offset from there. So that's the first step for um, setting up your um, receiver. Okay, now if I go back and what should we do next? Just double check, see what we're doing here. I go back to the status menu. You can see now that um, if I look at this, the right hand elevon up is correct. If I turn right, that is also correct. If I look on this side, however, up is reverse, and also going left, that's right, that's reverse. So. Uh, the left-hand elevon is reversed. Now, all we have to do there is go in, don't reverse it from the transmitter, go in to servo direction, oops, overshoot. Now that's out 6 on that side. So I just change, whoops, that is the wrong one. Out 6, change that to reverse. Okay. Go back and let's have a look now. So pulling up, correct, going left, that's also correct. So now all our um, control circuits are moving in the right direction. So that's done. Now, what about order level and stability? Now what you can do is go into, um, into the um, receiver setup. Now they default to gear because that's the only unused PWM input if you have to use these inputs. But I'm using CPPM so I can use all the channels available. Now I'm going to select AUX1, that's channel 7 for stability, and channel 8 for auto level. Now I'm also, I'm not using a second aileron today because I'm using a flyer wing. But um, oh, that's where you reverse the input channels if you need to. What I do want to do though is set up dynamic gain. That way I can change the uh, actual stability gain on the fly. So I've got that on channel 6, which is the flat channel. And I'm going to set it up so that at the maximum um, control of channel 6, it'll reduce the gain by 100%. So let's see how that goes. You notice on this status page we have 
a little display showing well, when it doesn't time out, water level on and off. Now if I select water level stability on, there you go. So what is that going to do? Let's have a look here. You see as I drop this wing, it drops down, so push back up again and reverse. What happens when I pitch up? It goes down. When I pitch down, it goes up. Same for the other side. That's working fine. Now, if I go over here, I'll set up this for the flat channel. You can see here, let me just go back to this one. This little knob here is channel 6. You can see it there. So at the minimum, you can hear that it's actually stabilizing. If I wind it all the way up, I've got nothing at all, which is exactly what you want. Um, and of course 50% is 50% and of course it still works perfectly well um, And that's pretty much it now. There's a few other things you have to sort of do um, I'll just show you water level if I flick the switch on we've got now Water level is now on so what does that mean? Now I'm just going to pitch to the right now it wants me to go back left again as you can see if I pitch down it wants to go up I pitch up it goes like that, and if I go to the left, it's trying to push me right again. So that's what our auto level is all about. Let's switch him off. But our auto level needs something to calibrate itself against. So we go into um, sensor calibration, and that's what it currently thinks is level. Now I'm going to assume that this current position on my couch here is good enough to level. So what I can simply do. Excuse me, let's push cal. Now that takes it as level. As you can see, if I tilt it to one side, it's taking that as a, a roll. Now, what you've got to do to do it properly, it's tricky with one hand, but turn it upside down. I've got my finger poised over button three and push button three. Beeps to say it's done. That just gives it a better, a better um, guesstimation of exactly what's inverted. So that's that done. Um, so what else can you do? All right. Now, as you saw before. Oh, by the way, this is kind of cute. You can now see what it believes to be level as I tilt it back and forward. Its idea of level is moving there, you can see that's where it believes completely level is to be. Um, now what I can do here is set up the, um, it's ready to go now, but we've already done servo direction. What about trim? Now, I've set my plane up so that the trims are pretty much spot on anyway, but this is kind of cool. If I go to output 6, that's the left elevon. Let's have a look here. Now what I'm going to do here is push the up and down buttons and you can see you can hear that it's rocking up and down so this is pretty much the same as what you do on a transmitter but you have to do it inside a Fenera so that looks pretty much spot on and then you can save that and we can do the same for output 7 let's have a look at him Hold on, all right. Save that. Now, what's also kind of cool is that you can actually set the um, the travel limits. Now, you can know um, you don't want your normally with just transmitter input, it's not a big deal. But you've got to understand that it's stabilizing on top of your transmitter input, so that it might actually travel further than you think. So, this is the left elevon. It's set to center so what I'm going to do is turn it over and we're going to watch closely what the servo does as you can see I don't want it to go that far because it's pushing into the the foam so I'll take it back a little bit it's about right and what did that turn out to be that's 80 percent throw any more than that and it would have been pushing into the foam. So we can save that. 
and the same for no, actually let's not bother with channel 7 make for an unusually boring video so I'm just going to go now the positive throw back to the same 6 alright now this is the other side of server travel so let's see if I can find it again a little bit and what this means is the server will never move beyond that point regardless of input or stability or order level or anything which means it'll always be unstressed and that turned out to be 115 percent of travel which is nice and safe so we'll save that and then we're done notice i've also got a battery monitor here so you can see um, that's mostly full ready to go. Well, let's just see what it looks like. So, that's moving up. Left is correct. Up on that side. Right. Now everything's off now, so if we move it, it's just flying like an ordinary sort of plane. You can switch on stability. Might help if I actually switch it on. So now it's it's hard to see, but it's stabilizing against smoothness. Switch that off, switch on 